ಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಜ್ಞನಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುಧಾ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜನಿ ಜಯ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಔರ್ ಪಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟೋಲಿ ಬಡೇಸನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರು ಜನ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುಡಿಯೋ ಟಿಸ್ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ Bhagavan Swaminarayan was describing the glories or you can say the nishchay or faith from the uh, from the life of his own devotees meaning how much faith or nishchay they have for Bhagavan and Sant and one after one Bhagavan narrated the stories from the life of devotees and now today Maharaj is going to describe the stories from the life of Dada Khachar. We know Dada Khachar is a very famous name in our Sampraday because there is no any scriptures, there is no any book which has no mention the name of Dada Khachar because Maharaj himself stay most of the time of his life in satsang in gadda in dada khachar's darbar so dada khachar's houses is not for himself but that for bhagwan and santo even dada khachar himself had dedicated his own like his property his wealth even his family his own self only to please maharaj and santo and surrender everything to bhagwan and that is why bhagwan also become too much pleased upon dada khachar and that is why he stay there in gadda understanding gadda is his home town after traveling in satsang in different different villages and different areas different state again bhagwan swami and came back to gadda just as any other person or any household devotees they travel for certain places and after that he may come back to his home in this way bhagwan swami narayan himself after traveling in satsang came back to gadda because he believes gadda is his home town Dada Khachar, he was a very young devotee because when Bhagavan Swaminarayan started the Vachanamrut in his Darbar, meaning the first Vachanamrut in 1876, at the time Dada Khachar's age was no more than 19 years. So he was a very young devotee and still his name was written in each and every scriptures of our sampraday what he had performed or what he, he had sacrificed for the bhagwan and santo so that he become too much famous in our sampraday he was not too wealthy or not you can say someone who is very well known or famous in the society dada khachar was not like that but his devotion his dedication for bhagwan that is beyond all kind of limitations the another thing he has that is some good qualities that the unflinching faith in the words of bhagwan and he has 100% trust in bhagwan swami narayan in each and every condition of his life he always believe that bhagwan swami narayan is the only bhagwan and he is forever reside with me and whatever happiness or misery come in my life 
that all because of Bhagwan's desire and whatever Bhagwan give me either happiness or misery, problems, difficulties or any kind of goodness to me that all because of Bhagwan's desire and what Bhagwan desire for me that is all good for me. Even though I understand it or not, that doesn't matter. But Bhagwan does good for me. This is what his understanding. Once Bhagwan Swaminarayan decided to take an exam of Dada Khachar, not for his exam, because in all kind of examination, Dada Khachar was passed. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan wants to show the other devotees, especially to us that how much faith Dada Khachar has for his Bhagwan. After Abel Khachar's death, Bhagwan Swaminarayan completed all the other rituals, the post that rituals, everything completed. After that, once in the Sabha, Maharaj declared, I do not want to stay more in Garuda. Then Dada Khachar requested Maharaj, why? Only my father, he went off, he passed away. But we, besides my father, we all are here and we requested you, please stay in our home. This is your home. Then Maharaj said, no, I do not want to live here because now Abel Khachar is not present. And Tomorrow, if you you will say to us that now this is our property, this is all houses and this uh, land and everything belongs to us. Then uh, and you also said that you have to go outside from our property or our houses. Then what we will do? So before that will happen. It is good for us to leave this village and settle any, uh, anywhere else. But Dada Khachar said, no Maharaj, if you want to give the documents and all other procedures to do, then we are ready. Then Maharaj said, don't worry, I want to transfer all of this property and not of my names, but please send all this property, wealth, these houses and everything, your farms, your business, everything to your sister's name. Then Dada Khachar immediately completed all the procedures to transfer all the ownership of his property, business, everything. Then Maharaj asked him, Dada Khachar, now, how will you earn your some income or some money for living yourself? Then Dada Khaja said, Mara, doesn't matter. I'll go to Karyani. I'll live for some time, some days in Vasta Khajar's Darbar. Vasta Khajar was his relative. That's why he said. And then I'll do some job there and doing some job in Karyani, I'll earn some money. Then Mara said, okay, then you can go. Then Dada Khachar proceeded towards the Karyani. And Maharaj, after that, called Jeeva and Laduba. Now, you are the owner, you are the proprietor of this property and business of Dada Khachar. Now, how did you do all this work? As at the time, females did not engage in such kind of business or job. And that is why Maharaj asked both of them. Then they said, Maharaj, we don't know about this. We only know that what you say, we have to follow that. Then Maharaj said, it is better if the other culture handle all these activities. Then both Laduba and Jiva, they said, Maharaj, whatever you say, we have to follow that. We don't know about this matter. Then Maharaj said, okay, 
call back to Dada Khachur. Then when Dada Khachur came there, then Maharaj, uh, Maharaj uh, also revealed the proposal for staying there in Garuda and handle, uh, meaning only manage to his own property, not being as an owner, but as a manager. Then Dada Khachur said, it's okay, Maharaj. This is all only for the showing Dada Khachar's faith in Bhagwan to others. So after this incident, we can learn the lesson from Dada Khachar's life that whenever Bhagwan or Sant gives any kind of command, we have to trust in his word, in his form, that whatever Bhagwan or Sant right now saying me or instructing me to do such things, or giving me any kind of command to do, if I follow that words, then that will be great benefit for me. Uh, in this way, Maharaj doesn't, uh, Maharaj is Maharaj. Maharaj didn't want to transfer any property to any other's name, nothing. But he only wanted to show the others, Dada Kachar's faith. After this incident, many other incidents they have from Dada Khachur's life. In another incident, once Dada Khachur was sitting in an assembly, there were many devotees and many santos were also in Garuda, and Maharaj uh, gave a small pot to Dada Khachur, and also Maharaj gave him a big pumpkin and Maharaj said Dada this is pumpkin I want to insert this pumpkin inside this pot then Dada Khachar said it's okay Maharaj then Dada Khachar tried to put the try to insert the pumpkin uh, in, uh, into the pot but if anyone see that Port was very small, and the pumpkin is very big. It is not possible, but Dada Khachar still try. He took five minutes, ten minutes. After that, all the other devotees they were laughing. Of Dada Khachar, some may say to Dada Khachar, "Dada, what are you doing? Where is your intellect?" You are very full. Even one who has a common sense, he understands that this is not possible. But Dada Khachar, without giving answer to anyone or without stopping even his practice, he just tried to put pumpkin inside the small pot. Then after some time, Maharaj asked, Dada Khachar, what would you think? Is it possible for you or not? Then fo uh, while folding his hands, Dada Khachar said, Maharaj, as you told me to put this pumpkin into this small pot, so it is definitely possible. But the method to put this big pumpkin into this small pot, that I don't know. If you reveal me the way to insert this big pumpkin into the small pot, then I can do it. So all the devotees and Santo, they all knew about Dada Khachar's faith in the words of Bhagwan. That how much faith he has for Bhagwan's divine words. One another incident. Once Dada Khachar was in barber's shop. He was there for cutting his hair. And as half of work was done, and someone came there and gave message to Dada Khachar, Dada Khachar, Maharaj is calling you. Then Dada Khachar instructed that barber, please stop now. And immediately he cleans his clothes and everything, and uh, only he covered his hair his head with a piece of cloth 
and he went to the Maharaj and he has with folded his hand. Please Maharaj, give me Agnya. Then Maharaj asked him, where are you? Before I calling you. Then Dada Fatur said, Maharaj, I was in barber shop for my hair cutting. Then Maharaj said, uh, then why didn't you finish the work? Then uh, Dada Fatur said, Maharaj, your Agnya is first priority in my life. Then Maharaj said, uh, you are very strong duty. You have too much virtues in your life. And that is why you can do this, but others, no one can do this this kind of do uh, this kind of task. So, uh, uh, in this way, Dada Kachar has too much faith in Bhagwan's words, and he's ever ready to follow Bhagwan's command. But still, in some of incident, we can see that even though Dada Kachar has too much faith and he was ever ready to follow Bhagwan's Agnya. Still in some of incident, he did not follow Bhagwan's Agnya immediately. Because he understood Bhagwan's Ruchi or we can say Bhagwan's nature. And that is why he sometimes stopped. In one of incident, there was one female worker for uh, who work in Dada Kajar's Darbar. That female worker, she was very poor. So once she decided to take some rupees from Dada Kajar's Darbar so that she have mo uh, more money. So once, as she decided, she ran with some money from Dada Dada Kachar's Darbar. But after few hours, she caught by the Dada Kachar's other men. Then, as Maharaj was informed about this incident, then Maharaj immediately said, immediately ordered to Dada Kachar, Dada Kachar, please, right now, this is my command to you. He held her head. Then, Dada Khachar said, it's okay, Maharaj, I'll do. Then, while saying this, Dada Khachar went off from the Sabha and Dada Khachar locked that female worker in one of the rooms and every day he sent some food, two, three times, water and all the other things and Dada Khachar instructed her not to come out of this room. Then after some days, after three, four days, Maharaj asked, Dada Khachar, you had killed that female worker, right? Then Dada Khachar, Dada Khachar say, yes, Maharaj, you gave me command to kill her. Then I did. Then Maharaj say, oh no, that's very wrong. Then Dada Khachar say, yes, Maharaj, I also thinking regarding this, that we did very wrong. Then Maharaj say, now what to do? Then Dada Khachar said, Maharaj, if you say that is only because of your words, she again become a leaf. Then Maharaj said, how is it possible? Then Dada Khachar said, you just say. It is all because of your words. Then Maharaj said, uh, if that is so, then that will be good for all. Then Dada Khachar said, it's okay, Maharaj. Then Dada Khachar unlocked that female and caught her uh, in front of Maharaj. She fell to Bhagwan's feet and asked for forgiveness. Then Maharaj also become happy. B Maharaj became happy because of Dada Khachar's understanding. Even though Maharaj gave him command to kill that female, but still Dada Khachar stopped at that time because he understood Maharaj's nature that Maharaj never gives such kind of command to kill anyone. Because in Sikshapatri, Maharaj said not to kill even a small insect. Then how is it possible to kill some human being? So this is what Dada Khachar's understanding. Now, 
this is all what we have discussed that some incidental part of Dada Kaju's life. But in the Vachanamrut Bhagavan Swaminan says that anyone's understanding is major when he or she had a uh, very adverse circumstances in his life. Then once upon a time Dada Kachur as he was uh, he was a ruler or we can say a king. So he has some villages, some properties given by the main king. So that in that reason, in that particular villages, the Atakachar had to collect some income and everything and give some part of that income to the state. So in this way, Dada Khachar, uh, and his uncle Jiva Khachar, they both were the same right to collect this kind of uh, income or we can say tax. But Jiva Khachar has some animosity with this Dada Khachar because Maharaj stay in the house of Dada Khachar more than his and that is why he has some some kind of jealousy with Dada Khachar. So he made a complaint in the state that Dada Khachar was not doing good. So now after that Dada Khachar also requested in the state that there is no any kind of fault on my part, nothing. Still, the case was filed in the court. And every time, as Dada Khachur, as according to the date, Dada Khachur had to go there for court cases. And every time, he came to Maharaj, he got blessings and went there for the case. Every time Maharaj said, Dada, today you will, God, you will get the victory. Your case will be finished today. And judgment will be on your favor. Every time Maharaj would say like this. But every time Dada Khachar had to come back without any kind of result or any kind of judgment from the court. Every time Dada Khachar got a new date after a month or after two months or after 15 days in this way. This would happen many, many times. Some say 22 times, some say 23 times. But this much time, the same incident happened, meaning every time he got blessings of Maharaj, Maharaj gave him surety that now Dada Khachar you will be, uh, your case will be finished and judgment surely will be on your favor. You will get your right to collect the income or taxes from certain reason. But every time Dada Khachar got failure, still Dada Khachar didn't have any kind of doubt in Maharaj or Santo's divine power. He understood Maharaj can do whatever he desired to do. And that is why at last time Maharaj asked him, Dada Khachar, every time I give you blessings, I even give you surety that now this time you will win in the court. And still, why you didn't get disappointment? And do you not thinking regarding my, uh, do, do you have any kind of doubt regarding my power, divine powers or my greatness? Then Nada Khachar said, no Maharaj, whatever you did for me or whatever you said, that's all true. I have unflinching faith in the form of you. Whatever you are doing, that's all good for me. In this way, he has, he has this much faith in the form of Bhagwan. Otherwise, any other person who is blessed by Bhagwan himself and who has such kind of blessings that now you will be win this time and still one time, two time, three times, but this much time, if one gets disappointment, then 
definitely no one can have faith remain in the form of Bhagwan. He may doubt that is this Bhagwan or what? Or is this an ordinary human being? But Dada Khachar, he was totally different from others and that is why he kept his unclinching faith in the form of Bhagwan even these adverse circumstances. So this is what some of incident from Dada Khachar Sarbar, uh, Dada Khachar uh, and Bhagwan Swami and himself narrated this incident in the Sabha in Loya. Only Bhagwan describes such kind of incident to give us the message that if we keep the same kind of faith in the form of Bhagwan and in the words of Bhagwan, then Bhagwan definitely become pleased upon us. Sri Ganushyam Maharajani Jai प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पल पन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर डियर कंशाम महाराज the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Jai Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and devotees, Jai Swaminara. Whenever we come into contact with Bhagwan or his true sadhu, there is this one nature that they possess due to which there's two roads that you might there's two roads that you encounter it's upon you which road you choose left or right what is the thing that happens when one encounters Bhagwan and his true Ekantik Sadpurush after taking their refuge, they want to make us one with God. Meaning Bhagwan wants to take us to his divine abode. He wants to have us experience his divine bliss. And the Ekantik Satpurush wants to also join us in Bhagwan. In order for that to happen, for countless lives, we have been possessing natures, swabhaos, vices, that have been 
disrupting our path to liberation that has been been an obstacle for numerous lives now when we encounter Bhagwan or his Ekantik Satpurush they tend to thrash our sabhaos destroy our sabhaos our nature, our bad nature for example greed, anger ego jealousy tastefulness you know, so on and so forth. Now, when I was talking to you about the, when you encounter a road and then you have to take two paths, on one path, if you believe Bhagwan and his true saint to be completely well-wisher, completely in, on our side, meaning our Atma's side, then you will join them in defeating these Sobhavs. That's the path on the left side. On the other hand, the other path is the right side where one takes side with one Sobhavs and becomes further away or very distant from Bhagwan or Zekantik Satpurush. Due to that, one day you become just completely distant and have no connection with them. That's the other path. It all depends on us when we come into this Satsang Fellowship, when we take the refuge of Bhagwan and Zekantik Satpurush. What path do we want to take? Now, if we know what path or how many paths there are, and if we read and study Bhagwan's Vachnamrut and also do Sun Samagam, then we can also identify that the true path is taking the side of Bhagwan and his saint no matter what happens, even if our subhals are thrashed. But 200 years ago, in the time of Sri Ji Maharaj, Bhagwan had made many, many great sadhus and devotees. And through them, he had done many mir miraculous works and through them, he had shown what it is to stay on the side of sadhus and Bhagwan, and what is, or and the other side of becoming distant from Bhagwan and his sadhu. In one of Sadguru Muktanand Swami's life prasangs, we want to take a look at what happened to a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, a well-known devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, an utmost top devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And we want to see what path he takes and what the result is. From this charitra, we can identify that choosing the side of Bhagwan and his true sadhu is a win-win situation. And on the other side, it's a complete loss. But when we understand this charitra and how it unfolds, we'll be able to tell how this person got into what he got into. Swami Narayan Hare. Once there was an assembly held with saints and devotees from various regions, at that time, Sri Hari pointed out at Muktanan Swami and asked, Swami, you are most senior sadhu among all and you have much experience regarding the satsang fellowship. So tell me, who is the utmost top devotee in our satsang? Bhagwan asked, I would like you 
in a in a in a formal assembly where there was devotees and sadhu sitting to the Sadhguru Muktanand Swami and what a tough task. Muktanand Swami is put on the hot seat completely because if he chooses one devotee or another, then what will happen? What will sadhus think? What will the devotees think? He is the mother of satsang. He has to take care of everyone and he is put on the hot seat by Maharaj. But in this charitya, you'll see that only Mukta and Swami can be put on this seat. There is no other saint that can handle the pressure or this even small question we can say, but in that time, a very great question. And due to that, a result of what happened in satsang, we'll see. Alaya Kachar of Jinjavada was also sitting in that assembly. He had been observing celibacy through his 100 previous births. That's how great of a devotee he was. After listening to his discourses, 18 youths had renounced worldly affairs and had become sadhus. That's how great he was that he also made 18 other sadhus after listening to his Kathavarta. In addition, he was the king of Jinjavadar, which is a village. These qualities had taken the root of deep ego inside his heart. He had thought himself to be an elite devotee. Muktan Swami said, Maharaj, I think in our satsang, Dada Kachar is a first class devotee. Of course, we just listened to Dada Kachar from Pujarushi Swami's lecture and you saw how Dada Kachar is and how, how he became such a great great figure in not only Bhagwan and not only Sadguru but also all devotees' hearts. His immeasurable faith and devotion has helped him earn. All the devotees supported the answer by clapping. So Alaya Kachar was egotistical. He thought that he would be number one but he wasn't and he, had, he was full of shame and he looked down while everyone else clapped around him. Then, tell me who is the second class devotee? Sriyari asked. Now Maharaj is just warming the whole system up. He knows what's going to happen, but his intention is very important. Whenever Maharaj or Zekantik Satpurush come on this earth, and whatever task or whatever kriya or whatever action they perform, we must understand their intention. And if we cannot understand their intention because they are very great, then at least we should know that whatever they're doing, they're joining me in God. May it be sweeping the floor, or may it be doing kathavarta, or may it be managing many many functions whatever it is their sole purpose intention is to join us in Bhagwan constantly become engrossed in Bhagwan no matter what circumstance no matter what happens but to constantly join with Bhagwan that's their end goal that's what they're here to do yet in difficult situations we tend to forget this and due to that we perceive negativity faults and that's what occurs in this charitra. Let's take a look. So Maharaj says second class devotee. Just then Alaya Kachar looked at Muktan Swami and made a rough and husky sound to make him aware of his presence. So suppose you know Muktan Swami is sitting in the assembly and he's just ready to say the second person. So, you know how someone wants to be known or someone wants to be, you know, completely stand out. You make like a, <clears throat> I'm here, I'm present, you know. So that's what Ali Akachar did. He thought that Muktan Swami would say his name. Muktan Swami was unaware of his pride and said, Maharaj, see, it says Muktan Swami was unaware of his pride. Muktan Swami was unaware, but he was aware as well because Swami was Antaryami. He knew the inner wishes of all those who sat there. But he he was also blind. He didn't want to see any of that. So he was naturally 
inclined to saying the next name that came in his mind. If this was going to be a very major issue and it was, if it was already out of proportion, he would have already called Ali Akhachar's name first, even if he wasn't. But Maharaj wanted to remove that swabao of Ali Akhachar. Maharaj wanted to reprimand Ali Akhachar. And due to that, Muktan Swami says, Maharaj, Paratpai is a second-class devotee who has sacrificed everything in your service and for his sadhus. Suddenly, a round of applause stirred the environment. With this, Ali Akhachar was senselessly bewildered. Still, he had hoped to be set at the third position. When Sri Hari inquired about the third-ranked devotee, Muktan Swami declared Jinabai at number three for his embodiment of humility, faith, and service. Again, a rhythmic sound of clapping filled the atmosphere. This enraged Ali Akhachar, meaning he could not bear it. He unsheathed his sword, meaning he took his sword out and angrily, angrily rushed towards Muktan Swami. As he was about to strike the sword, the surrounding devotees grabbed and held him back. Muktan Swami, what kind of a saint? We are even listening for the past couple of weeks how great he is. Yet, when one's nature becomes suppressed, becomes triggered, then those two paths are in one's sight. One can see, and one has a choice. Bhagwan lives in, in each and every one's heart, and Bhagwan makes each and every person aware. What side do you want to take? On one side you have me and the Akantik Sat Purush. On the other side you have your Sobhaus. If you fight with your mind, you will go towards Maharaj and Bhagwan. If you become friends with your mind, you will go towards or away from Maharaj and the Akantik Sat Purush. So Ali Akhachar took out a sword and was just ready to pretty much kill Muktanan Swami. Sri Hari got up from his seat and said, Ali Akhachar, in fact, you are worth, worth to be a first class devotee. No one is equally worth to be revered as you are. Now Maharaj is trying to, you know, swerve him back, trying to pull him back from his rage. I know very well that you have been observing perfect celibacy for your previous 100 births. And many have become sadhus after listening to your discourses. And now Muktan Swami has grown old. And accordingly, he has lost his train of thought on who to rank where. Meaning Maharaj is just now shielding Muktan and Swami and trying to uh, suppress Ali Akhachar's anger and ego from uh, becoming totally out of control. Such praising words uttered by Sri Hari pacified his anger, but Sri Hari was pained at the act of Ali Akhachar. In the Vachnanud, Gadada, middle chapter 17, he has revealed the cause of such insensible act. If someone has firm faith in God but lacks an extreme aversion towards the Vishes, meaning desires for sense gratif gratification, that even if a person is like Muktan and Swami were to denounce those objects of enjoyment, he would go as far as to cut off the person's head with a sword in order to harm that person. Meaning, Bhagwan has stated, I don't know if this Vachnamrut is uh, spoken by Maharaj after, after this prasang or before this prasang, but Bhagwan has said that he would even be ready to cut off the head of Muktan and Swami. That's how much hurt he would feel. Sri Hari wanted to teach him the truth. After the assembly was over, Sri Hari, along with saints and devotees, went to the river Gela. So they went to the river after the assembly, uh, assembly was over. On reaching there, they got ready to take a bath. There was a slight hill from which one can dive into the river. So Sri Hari said, while looking at Ali Akhachar, now one who is the topmost devotee in satsang will dive in first. Maharaj is very, very tactical and smart. 
And Maharaj wants to completely remove Alaya Khachar's Sobao. And this is not a hostile move by Maharaj. This is a compassionate move by Maharaj and his Ekantik Satpurush. They are doing this only for the sole purpose of our happiness. If we cannot understand this, then it's our loss. But Maharaj is thinking that these souls have been roaming around countlessly in numerous lives, one after another, one after another, in various bodies, yet they have not reached my abode, Akshardham. The true fact is, do we want Bhagwan? How much do we want Bhagwan? How badly do we want to attain him? This is the found, you can say, this is the main question. The fundamental question is, how bad do we want Bhagwan? Meaning, how bad do we want to reach him? We want to meet him. We want to talk with him. We want to hug him. We want to interact with him. How bad? If you want to do it tomorrow, then Bhagwan will come tomorrow. If we want to do it after a hundred days, Bhagwan will come after a hundred days. If we want to do it after a hundred years, then so be it. And if we want to do it after a hundred lives, so be it. It's in our hands. And if we want to do it today, if we want to attain Bhagwan, then Bhagwan is not even an atom's distance away, according to Sarangpur 10th chapter, Vachnamur, Bhagwan's own, wor own words. But to experience that atomless distance in our heart, to experience Bhagwan in our heart, to touch our Atma with Bhagwan, that all depends on our desire. And how could that be possible? Only when we completely close all the other desires we have and focus that channel, that energy of desires only in Bhagwan. That can occur. There is no other method, there is no other way. You can only do one thing. Either you choose Bhagwan or you choose Maya. There is no mixing. Oil and water doesn't mix. In the same way, this whole operation done by Maharaj is to attain him. But Ali Akachar, let's see if he realizes. So Bhagwan's going to pull a little prank here. Let's see what happens. Now, one who is the topmost devotee in satsang will dive in first. Ali Akachar became pleased and prepared to dive in. He was obviously like, yes, I'm number one. It's my turn to dive first. As he tried, Triyari pulled his undergarment and Alaya Khachar fell into the river, river naked. The Gati devotees laughed very loudly. Alaya Khachar could not bear the insult and commanded Triyari to apologize. He commanded Maharaj to say sorry. How could you insult me in front of all these devotees? Triyari conditioned to do so if Alaya Khachar could, would prostate before Muktan Swami and ask for forgiveness, but ultimately pride and status delayed his action. Sri Hari was adamant. Alaya Khachar broke his gunti. He, became, he came out of the water, wore his wet clothes and set out towards Jinjavadan. He took the path on the right. He could not stay on the side of Maharaj and his Ekandik Satpurush. Due to that, he became distant. He became completely distant, so much so that he broke his kanti, meaning he didn't want to follow Bhagwan Swaminayan anymore. Just by what? Think about it. Just by not, <clears throat> just by not Muktanan Swami saying number one, two, or three. If we think about it, how long are those 
devotees or people going to have that kind of ecstasy? Oh, that Dada Kachar is number one and Paratpa is number two and Jinaba is number three and you were never called. Who is going to look at that and how long are is people going to remember? No one has time. Honestly. This situation can apply in our life. When <clears throat> this kind of a prasang, maybe not in such a high assembly or something where our ego gets a little nudged or gets a little you know shaken we can definitely see that how long is this body going to stay how long am i going to stay on this earth and why so much why not worship bhagwan and attain him where there is no kind of mess like this where there's only bliss bliss and bliss where there is nothing but Bhagwan and his mukto and they're there eternally and all you have to do is just apply yourself there but you know what a common modern devotee wants to do he wants to put one he wants to keep one leg here on this earth and he wants to keep one leg in Akshradam. Bhagwan says it's not possible. <clears throat> it's not possible because there is no Maya in Bhagwan's Dham. If you want Bhagwan, you have to let go of everything else. If you want everything else, you have to let go of Bhagwan. You don't have to let go of Bhagwan. Bhagwan will automatically run away from you. It's a matter of what we want and how intensely we want it. Meaning, <clears throat> in Sadguru Gunatitan Swami's Vato, Swami has said this one Vat that I am reminded of every day. Swami says that I have not kept anything but God inside my heart. Meaning, He has not kept any Swabhavs or anything. He has only kept Bhagwan inside. And due to that factor, he was who he is now. And we remember him even today. And we may remember Aliya Kachar today, but for what purpose, right? So it's a matter of what you want to keep. In the end, let's go towards the conclusion. It is said that thereafter, he never came to have Sri Hari's darshan. When Sri Hari was about to leave his physical body, Aliya Kachar did not come to have his final darshan due to his ego. After Sri Hari's disappearance from this world, Aliya Khatri experienced great regret and he so asked Muktan Swami for forgiveness and prostrated, beyond, prostrated to Swami. Muktan Swami was pleased and had consoled him. Finally, Aliya Khatri experienced peace of heart. So Aliya Khatri took a U-turn. It was only... Muktan's Maharaj was already back up, back to his Akshardham. But if Muktan Swami had gone to Akshardham, then Alaya Kachar could not even have taken a U-turn or a detour or anything. He would have been doomed. But Sadguru Muktan Swami, we can even say his daya, that even knowing through his omniscience power that Alaya Kachar will come to me, he stayed on this earth for the factor of Aliya Khatri's Kalyan, one devotee's Kalyan. How much compassion can that... I mean, there's no words, there's no measurement. But we can see the true greatness of Muktanan Swami in even the smallest charitras when he was on this earth for such a period of time. And we can learn on and on. For next week's lecture, we'll learn more on Sadguru Muktanan Swami's life, saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.